This video is about my experience with a scan fare, they call it, that I got from Creality a while back and I'm finally getting a chance to try out and learn how to use. So I thought I'd just share it and um, I picked this up on, uh, it was like a late Black Friday sale or something, so it was really reasonably priced and um, it's a 3D scanner, comes with a kit, uh, nice little pouch there that it, has all the cables that you need to use it and there's a um, battery and stuff and when I started playing with it I realized I needed a turntable so I went on Vivor and I found this turntable it's a kids pottery wheel and I wound up um, I thought it would go slow enough but it wouldn't I wound up replacing the motor making a bearing to put under the table there and then 3d printing a table to put on it to set parts on turned out that wasn't really big enough and it was too white and then I had some plastic I um, cut with a laser and glued two pieces together to keep it centered. And then I had to put a matte uh, black vinyl that I had laying around on it for reflection. And a 0 to 5 RPM turntable, you know, that didn't cost me a lot. And then once I started playing with the scanner, I realized it was kind of tough for me to, to hold the name with that handle sticking way down there. So what I did is I designed and 3D printed up. This is my first version of the handle just for using the scanner alone. And then later on I realized I'd have better results with a little light under it. And actually you can see the light will fit on both of these. But um, I found out with the bottom lighting I have better results with the scans. So I uh, purchased a little light off of Amazon. And I'm mounting the scanner on top of that. And it's going to be really good... Um, nice solid hold and good position location plus I made this big enough to just slide the battery down in when I get a phone that's going to be powerful enough for this to use and I can put the phone mount right up there and plug everything in you can see it comes with the cables to plug into uh, to use a phone for the preliminary scanning but for now I'm actually uh, using a just a USB cable to uh, recharge light at this point when I put the battery in there but there you can see it comes with everything you need to get going so I'm gonna start here with the uh, worst case scenario that I found uh, I had a problem with and that was when you're scanning anything that has a um, flat planes or a square opening or rectangular opening on it um, it does a wonderful job of picking up the uh, surface outer surface of things but the minute it goes into a pocket like that um, I don't think this is the best scanner for that kind of scanning but I just wanted to show you anyway uh, this is just a pistol grip I wanted to make a, a 3d print so I could uh, you know copy it eventually and turntable you know works nice and you can see the software in the back there is uh, scanning that little light on the bottom there helps with the bottom shadows to get deeper um, scans into things. And if you see that green section in the middle, you'll see that, you know, that's where you want to try to keep it spaced at. And uh, at times, you move a little bit too much one way or the other, in or out, and everything will turn red. It'll stop scanning, and you just have to keep playing with it till it finds the right spot again to pick up and, you know, go back to where you left off. But basically, um, you know, it's a, it's a slow process, and you do have to, I find you have to go around several times. But, I mean, with this low-cost scanner, you got to expect it. It's a, it's like the cheapest scanner I could find. So um, it, it does do a pretty good job in there. I lost it, you can see. And there it goes. It found the spot. So it's really good at that. Um, and it does work nice. It doesn't... Uh, doesn't always work so easy on dark colored stuff you have to get some kind of a spray to uh, whiten it up a little bit to get a good scan but so I just grabbed this here to uh, to give you a you know a quick look of once I process it you'll see how I do have a problem you know getting it to pockets like that but otherwise it does a wonderful job on exterior surfaces and you can see in the background here I did you know I have scanned a couple things to get practice and printed out a light bulb and stuff like that so uh, I know that it does work eventually so pretty much looks like I got everything you can see there's no brown spots left on the, the main part of it in the software back there 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop, stop the scan and uh, then I'm going to go in to process it. And first thing you want to do is clean up what's the garbage that's on it. Um, even though I turn off the, uh, the turntable, you know, it says to eliminate it, I still get garbage down there that you have to clean up. So there is a little tool here. You can use a box tool or I'll show you later on. There's also a lasso tool to use to clean it up. But it pays to take some time to get this garbage out of it now because once you've got a 3D model, it's a little bit harder to get rid of. But I'll show you one option in a, in a little while. So then you process it. Now this took about 10 minutes to do and there's what I got there's the um, the outside of it is you know really accurate you can see but the inside that slot and stuff is where the problem is so I've got to figure out that I think you can get some targets to put in there or something but I'm not sure about that so next I decided to grab something to uh, try to make a project out of it and this is our favorite little garden gnome here and I decided to uh, try and scan this in and turn it into a night light. So this is, uh, I think it's about 10 inches tall, something like that. And you can see this is done the next setting up the size. You set the size in the software when you start. And if you see that bar over on the screen, that green bar moving up and down, that pretty much tells you the spacing you want the scanner at. See, I'm too close now. I'm still getting a scan, but it turns right there and loses it, and then it'll you know, they get back into that area, it'll go out and pick it up. Now, this is a reflective surface, so I, I'm not really sure how good it's going to come out. Um, but you can see how that light that I put under the scanner, you know, most light comes in from the top and the sides. But when you get underneath the deep crevices and stuff, you really need that little bit of extra light to um, to get in there and let you get the uh, the full depth of field. So it does take a couple trips around and stuff. And um, this actually, um, I can't wait to try the, you know, the bigger size things too. I'm going to try to scan my granddaughter in someday and make a miniature of her, I think. Unless I get a tr big 3D printer, then I can make a big one of her. But anyhow, um, just go around and watch that the screen there. You'll see any brown spots you want to go back and hit again because it means there's going to be a hole in the scan when you process it so you want to try to make sure that everything is green on the part that you're um, copying here and again it just takes a couple passes around and then do the original processing and that goes really quick and there's the model and now same thing with the cleanup um, really have to uh, clean it up even though you know it's not supposed to show the turntable and I get a lot less turntable with the matte black finish on it, but um, but still, I always get a little bit. So I'm just going to show you to go in here and clean the most of it up. And that lasso tool, I, went, I keep going the wrong way. I have to get used to it. If you go one way, you can uh, just set points and it'll follow you. The other way is a straight line. So... It, this is a time-consuming part. Actually, it takes you know quite a bit of time sometimes to clean them up, depending on the mess you get. Uh, in the beginning, without the light underneath, I was getting a lot more of a mess. But now I'm getting it down pretty clean to just the table. And I think that black, you know, the black uh, surface on the table helps. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to process it. And this here on this gnome took. Uh, approximately 20 minutes i'm not gonna you know sit here and make you watch the whole thing but it does take some time and this is with a um pretty fast ryzen 7 chip in this uh, little mini computer with 32 gig of memory so you know it does take a little bit of um power to process it and uh, big scans like this you have to wait a while and there we are 20 minutes later that's what the scan looks like and boy, was I glad there's absolutely no holes in it. I got everything. All the surfaces are complete. And I think it's beautiful. I was a little worried being, you know, a shiny thing. But um, that light really does help. And look at that, all the details. So I just wanted to, you know, show you. You save this. 
I'm going to take and save this as a STL. And then I found this program online, Mesh Mixer, that I downloaded. And here I've got this opened up. It's a free program that allows you to uh, mess with the 3D models. You can actually reshape areas. You can wipe out areas. You can um, cut it on planes, which is what I'm doing now, just to show you. I didn't. I just let it come in here however it wound up, so I'm just going to... Uh, move this plane around and you can see how it cuts everything off on the one side of the plane and I'm just going to line up by eye to try to get it to the best best of my uh, ability there to uh, cut all that the rest of that stuff off because that's actually below the model where I want it so this program is it's it is free and uh, it works a fantastic if I wanted to reshape his eyes or reshape his hat to be very easy with this program there's all kinds of tools but I don't know how to use them yet I've just played with some of them and I will recommend you know you, you play with this a little bit and if I did it right I probably would have set him up on that uh, build plate down there but um, I didn't so there it is I just uh, you know cut him off at the f just below the feet there and you can see all the rest of that stuff is gone and now I'm going to 3d print it so I want to uh, make it hollow and add a wall to it and this program lets you do that you can add a wall thickness you want and you can hollow it out I want to make a night light so I know it's too big it won't fit on my printer so I want to try to keep about a one millimeter thick wall when I print it so I'm gonna go you know like twice that almost to uh, to get a good uh, good starting point and that there right there it now is just hollow and you can make it into a bank or a nightlight or anything you want but um, I just want to show you and then it's just uh, you know, just follow the instructions and accept it when things are ready to go to the next one and stuff. And then once it's cleaned up or shaped however you want it, I'm just going to export it as a STL for my Creality printer. So there I'm going to um, turn it into a file I can use in the Creality Print, and I love this new Creality Print software that they've, you know, updated a while ago. Really works good, and the printer just works amazing. I can't believe this cheap printer the quality I'm getting out of it, and no problems yet. Only problems I had was trying some cheap filament in it once, but there we are. We're in the slicer now, and uh, as you can see, it doesn't fit on my, it's too tall for my printer, so I'm just going to play around and, uh, Move it to the center there a little bit. And try to get that pretty much set where I want it. And now I'm going to scale it down. Uh, about half. I want about half the size to fit on one of those uh, plastic LED bases that I use for the um, acrylic signs. So there you can select the size, you know, and everything in the program. It's very easy to use. And that's what it looks like sliced. You can see it's a, it's just a hollow figure there. So once it's sliced, I'm going to send it to the printer. And the printer's down to basement, but this thing's neat. You can just send it, you know, wirelessly and it goes down there and start the printer and run it from there. So there it goes uh, off to the printer all within a couple minutes, you can see. And let's go down and take a look at it. And there's a... Um, Printer. and there's another version of in the corner they're showing how it's printed out fully and it came out gorgeous I'm just amazed at the quality I'm getting from this printer um, hopefully I can get a bigger one someday but that's it um, you know some of the things I've played with uh, I scanned in a little bank there made a duplicate got a half scale of that for the light and I scanned in a light bulb in the beginning and tried printing that out but I had a problem in the top area but still it came out good with the texture on it. That would make another night light. And uh, everything actually works good. And I really um, recommend that you come up with some kind of a handle. Or I could, um, maybe I'll upload this one to Thingiverse. 
um, just because it's, it really makes it a much easier to use a uh, scanner. And a turntable does help. So anyhow, there it is sitting on one of the little bases that I use for the signs and going around. And I mean, it's on the turntable now, but basically it'll be fixed uh, all the other times when it's used. So I just wanted to share this with you and show you how everything works here and how that little scanner works. And um, I think this guy is awesome, especially when it's dark out. You can see it's just uh, the whole thing glows over that little light. So I'm going to make a couple other ones, different things. But, um, you know, in the end, uh, this scanner is not the best, best one available, but it does work. And if you take your time and you throw away bad scans and do it over again and stuff, eventually you will get a perfect scan. And, um, you know, it does work good. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.